Okay, we're back in the book of Exodus. And today, Exodus 12, we will need to break it down into two sessions. But the reason why I wanted to spend more time on Exodus 12 is it is one of the most important chapters in the book of Exodus. We covered Exodus chapter 3 and 4 where uh, the name of God and God reveals himself, and we spend some time there, uh, to show us who God really is. Now, in chapter 12, we are entering into the 10th plague, the 10th miracle that God will do. And, and it has a lot of implications, not only to the church, but also to Israel. And you find that all through the Bible, uh, they have always been reminded of the Passover. And this is the chapter on the Passover. And so in order for us to uh, be aware, we need to really break down uh, from the Hebrew what exactly is the Passover and why is it so important uh, that God wants them to always remember. And, and so Passover is a very different uh, situation. And so let's, let's uh, look at this right now. In chapter 12, verse 1, the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. And this is what God is saying. Verse 2, this month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now we need to remember that this is like saying it twice, right? Beginning of months, first month of the year. That's exactly saying the same thing. Now, for most of us, we really don't know the calendar of the Israelites. And, and even till today, uh, they have the same calendar. And so at that point in time, their calendar was this. So let me just briefly show you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The first month to them at that point in time, and even to today, is called Tishrei. And then it goes all the way down to the sixth month called Adar. The seventh month is called Nisan. Not, not the Japanese car manufacturer. Uh, and then it goes all the way to the twelfth month is called uh, Elu. Now what is important is this. Uh, today, we have the beginning of the year for the Hebrew calendar, and they celebrate the new year called Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is always celebrated sometime in September, our September, all right? And so now, the month that we are concerned at this point in time in Exodus 12 is this month here. It is the seventh month, and God says, Treat this month as the beginning of the year to you. Beginning of year. Why is this important? Because one of the things of people's character, uh, even for ourselves, uh, we all pay attention to the beginning of the year. You know, so you have New Year parties, New Year resolutions, Thanksgiving, whatever. Right, on the first of the year. And so this is the first of the year, Rosh Hashanah. But it's in September. And now when it comes to the month of Nisan, God is telling Moses and uh, Aaron, this is going to be the more important month. In fact, treat this month as the beginning of your year. Every time you come to the month of Nisan, and this would be in the March, right? March, April time frame. Then you must remember this. And why is it, why did God change the calendar? And it's very interesting is because we all remember the beginning of years. 
we don't remember the seventh month of the year. Right? And, and, and this event is happening in the seventh month right here. And so God says, no, treat this as the first month of the year so that you all will remember whenever it comes to the month of Nisan, it is the beginning of the year for you, not in Tishrei. Tishrei would, it is still treated as a civil year, but the religious calendar, the first month is Nisan. And so we come to the month of Nisan now. Uh, if you are not aware, um, we will soon be getting into the month of Nisan. Um, we are now going into the month of Adar soon. And Adar uh, is the month before Nisan. And so God says, treat this as the first month of the year to you. Why? Because it is the time where everyone in the nation must remember. So God changed the calendar so that the behavior changes. If this was still kept as the seventh month, people would just forget because nobody remembers what the sixth month, fourth month, seventh month, tenth month. It's not interesting to our lives. But if it's the first month, then it is special. And so you tell all the congregation of Israel saying, on the 10th of this month of Nisan, you shall take a lamb. Now understand this, this lamb, can, this, this word lamb, how should I say? It, 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 it doesn't necessarily mean lamb. It could be uh, part of a flock actually part of a flock of a sheep or goat, right? These are all small four-legged flocks, right? That goes out grazing. Now, this is important because of the type of animal or the class of animal that is called a lamb, according to the house of his father. So every household, one lamb. Now, this is, this is interesting because I want to show you what has happened in chapter 8, verses 25 to 26. In Exodus chapter 8, verses 25 to 26, uh, it says this. It says, Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron says, Go, sacrifice to your God in the land. And this would be in Egypt. He said, Don't go away. Just do your sacrifice here. Means the killing of the animal. Now in verse 26, Moses said, It is not right to do this. Why? Because we would be killing the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Now, this, this, this actually tells us a couple of things. And we were there talking about it in chapter 8. So just very briefly, uh, you would see that when he says it's an abomination, this would be a disgusting thing. Why is it disgusting? It is disgusting because there is such a god called Kanum. It is a god of the Egyptians that has a, it is always depicted with a ram head. You know, ram is from the class of the sheep, right? The sheep and the goat. And so this is an Egyptian god. And so if you kill a lamb or a goat, um, you, you're, you're symbolizing that you're killing uh, their, their God. And so Moses is saying, if we do this before their eyes that they can see, will they not stone us? And the word stone here is to kill, right? And, and that 
is the background of Exodus chapter 12. That right now, Moses is telling the people to do exactly this to spite the Egyptians and we will sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians, which is a goat or a lamb. And this would represent the God and we will kill that God, symbolizing that. And it will upset the Egyptians. And when the Egyptians see that they are killing the goats or the lamb or the ram, they will be very, very angry. And so we're now back to chapter 12, verse 3. And so this would be an instruction to tell the Israelites, you know that your neighboring Egyptians are going to be very, very angry. In fact, they're going to be so angry that you, they, they probably want to kill you. But if you listen to God, then you've got to choose. Are you going to offer the lamb or are you not going to offer the lamb? Are you going to listen to God or are you going to be afraid of the Egyptians? And that would be this chapter. Every household, if it's too small, let him and his neighbor share, right? That each man's need you shall make count of for the lamb. So, well, if you've got a small family, join with the neighbor, right? Your lamb, very important here, very, very important, shall be without blemish, male of the first year. Do you think the, 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 the Israelites can actually add or subtract from God's word? Can they say, well, without blemish, you know, it's very difficult to find us a perfect lamb. Maybe uh, a lamb that has a slight scar, a, a, a little limb, right? Maybe the eye is one eye jack. Uh, if I can't find a male, can I use a female? If it's not the first year uh, lamb, can I have, well, more than a year? As you can tell, uh, and we have covered this this morning's uh, message, you cannot add or subtract from God's word. So if it's without blemish, it's without blemish. If it's a male, it cannot be a female. If it's a first year, you better get a first year, right? And it can be from the sheep or goat. So you can see that the Passover, we always call it a Passover lamb. Uh, unfortunately, the word lamb, as, as you can see, this word lamb, uh, it could be a, a sheep or a goat. And that's what we have here. And so pick a lamb or pick a goat. Let it be first year. Let it be a male. And let it be perfect. No blemish, no fault. So when you look at that lamb on the 10th day of the month of Nisan, it cannot be limping. It cannot be without uh, a leg. Or it cannot be without an ear. Or it cannot be without an eye. Uh, you know. God doesn't want that. God wants it perfect. Without blemish is what it means by perfect. And it must be a male. Please don't get a female. It must be the first year. Don't get a three-year-old sheep. That is the rule that God has set. So don't change. That's what it means. Don't add and don't subtract. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And so now we have an instruction to pick it on the 10th and then to keep it to the 14th day of the month. And then every one of the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. That would be at sunset. Which sunset? When the day begins on the 14th, it's sunset. But when it ends, it's also the sunset. And so it will be on the 14th day sunset. The time before the sun goes down. And verse 7, And they shall take some of the blood. And the word blood here is dam. 
remember I told you all, Dam is red from the word Adam, which is the name of the man. And Adam or Dam is taken from the Adama, the soil. And it would be referencing the red, redness. So Adam has Dam in him. That is blood. And now you take the blood of the goat or the sheep. And you put it on the doorpost. And let me give you the word for the doorpost. That is on the fourth um, verse 7. Okay, verse 7. The word doorpost is mezuzah. And, and we have a name, another uh, thing that is called the mezuzah, which the Jews today have a little, uh, a little container where they write the Torah scroll and they, they put it into that little container and they call it mezuzah as well. And they stick it to the doorpost, which is the mezuzah. And that represents the going in and coming out. You have God's word. You know, they, they use that kind of symbolism, quite literal. Right? And then we have another word which we seldom use. It's called the lintel. The lintel actually means the overhanging part of the door. The overhanging. And so if you have the door, and this would be the mezuzah, and this would be the lintel, that overhanging, the overarching part of the door. And in the houses where they eat it, what does that mean? It means that they will be inside the house to eat the meat. All right. Now, what it will be interesting that I think as an observation is the lamb or the goat is in defiance of the Egyptians. I would think that either the Israelites have never ever done such an offering to God. And this will be the first time because it would actually upset the Egyptians. Uh, or number two, they would have used other animals so that it doesn't upset the Egyptians. But whatever that may be, this will be the first time in their lives in Egypt that they would take either a sheep or a goat to kill in spite of the threat to be killed by the Egyptians. And so this actual event is really a test whether they fear God or they fear the Egyptians. That would be a very big test for them. The overall instructions is they will eat the flesh of the goat or the lamb that night. Now, this would be quite interesting. So let me just draw this out for you. So we have the month of Nisan. On the 10th, you pick the animal. And then on the 14th, you kill. When do you kill on the 14th? This, this is important. You kill here at sunset. And once you kill, you've got to cook. And once you cook, it takes time. And then you'll be eating here. And so this whole time where we talk about uh, the Passover is overlapping two days. On the evening of the 14th, and the beginning of the 15th. And so this is sunset where the lamb is killed. And then this is cooked. And then this is eaten. And that would be the picture that we must keep at the back of our mind. So let's come back to the text. And then you roast it in fire. It's, it's like a burnt offering of sorts, right? So you have re-killed an animal, and that's a slaughter. 
And that would be an offering, right? And then when you roast it in fire, that would also resemble a burnt offering. Now you have to eat it with unleavened bread. And let me give you the name of unleavened bread. You, you'll be surprised. There is a name for unleavened bread. It is called matzah. Matzah as an unleavened bread works this way. And so we would have fire. Okay. And then on top of the fire, uh, they would have a, a pan, a gauze pan. Okay. Let me, well, I assume it looks something like that. And then on top of the gauze pan, they would put their dough. And the dough would be flat. Okay. And because the, 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 the gauze is in squares, by the time the, the bread is, the matzah is cooked, you would see it this way. You would have a big piece and you would have lines, square lines. And you can actually break them there at the, at the edges. So it comes across as little squares. And it's unleavened and it's flat. And those squares are made by the burning of the gauze, the, the cross gauze of this uh, little uh, equipment, right? That, that you make the bread. And that's called matzah. And then you eat with bitter herbs. Now that's, um, how should I say? Things that is bitter that has bitterness. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether I could give you any name for this, but um, the, the idea here is, first of all, the matzah has no taste, I guess. Uh, there is no salt. And so it, it, it can be quite tasteless. And so you eat it with your roast lamb or your roast goat, and then you have something bitter to go along when you eat it. And the reason for it to be bitter is that it, it well, one, it kind of balances the, the taste. But two, it is a symbolic reference of something that is, well, I guess bitter, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, that 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 you 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 eat and and you remember it, right? I, I think that would be a good good way of saying it. But it says don't eat it raw. Don't eat it raw. This is not uh, uh, sashimi, right? This is not raw fish. This is meat. So don't eat it raw. Don't boil the meat in water, but it must be roasted in fire. This will give them the indication that in the future, sacrifices must continue to be in fire for God. What do you burn? You burn the entire animal, the head with its licks and all the innards. And you shall let none of it remain until morning. Meaning you must eat everything as you can. And what remains of it until the morning, you shall burn with fire meaning you don't keep. So this is a rule. Now, you may wonder why, you know, why that can't they tap out and then bring it along? No. God says, this is the rule. This is how you eat it. First, you, you select the animal. That's the rule. How you cook the animal and what you eat with, it's a rule. You're not supposed to eat it raw or boiled. That's a rule. How you roast it, it's a rule. And when you cannot finish it, you burn the balance with fire, and that's a rule. And how do you eat it? You eat it with a belt on your waist, sandals on your feet, staff on your hand, that you are about to leave. And that's a rule. And you shall eat it in a hurry. That you don't sit back and kick back. This is not a, a festive season of... Uh, of a king's supper. 
You don't sit back. Now, it's not a Chinese New Year's Eve dinner, right? So God tells them, this is the entirety of the ritual. You have to do it. And it's called the Lord's Passover. This day belongs to God. And the word Passover is from the word Pesach. Pesach. And the word Pesach means Passover. It is the Lord's Pesach. And so the, the word Pesach uh, comes from the word Pasach. And the word Pasach means to hop. To hop. And, and sometimes it's with reference to somebody who is, well, I guess you, you, you hop on one foot, right? And it symbolizes a person who is lame. That one foot, that you can't walk, walk properly in two feet. So one of your foot is, is broken. So you hop. And so the word pasak also means lame. And, and the idea here is you, you skip over. So let me draw this out. It means that you have one foot and you hop over. So you skip over a spot. And that's what Pasak means. So it's the Lord's Pasak. Means the Lord will skip over. That is what it means by Passover. But then there is always a context, right, to all these things. The context is this. God says, for I will pass through the land. So the word pass is avar. It's like Abraham crossing the Euphrates River, the great river, and then crossing through the land of Canaan. And so God says, I will cross through the land of Egypt. Really, literally pass through the land of Egypt that very night. That night. And I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. The firstborn literally means the male. Firstborn child, firstborn animal. Doesn't matter whether it belongs to the slave girls, man and beast. Against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. And this is the first time God is using this word that I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And this is to pronounce once and for all, beyond all shadow of a doubt, that all gods will die before Yehovah, right? And so you find that Exodus 12 is so important because it is a culmination of the fight, not just with Pharaoh, but against all the gods of Egypt, which Pharaoh is one of them. And so when God takes the life of the firstborn of both man and beast in the land of Egypt, it shows that God is a giver of life and he can take life as an execution of judgment, meaning someone can be executed or life taken because of a punishment, because of an execution by the judge of this world. That is how serious this issue is. Now, the blood will be a sign, an ot, a symbol for you on the houses where you are, because that's where you will be eating the lamb or the goat. So that when I see the dam, the blood, I will pass over you. And this word, uh, pass over means uh, to skip, to hop over. You remember what Pasach means? And that's what, the same word. God will hop over you. And the plague, the plague of what? The plague of the death of the firstborn, both man and beast, shall not be on you to destroy you. To, to Well, the word destroy here is to put to ruin. To ruin you. When I strike 
the land of Egypt. Now, later on, you see that God is not the one who is going to execute this. He is the one who pronounced the execution, and there's somebody else who's going to do that. But it is under the instruction of God. So it's God who is executing the instruction, and it is to destroy. It is not a celebration. So it is to be eaten with bitter herbs right here. Verse 14. So this day, God reminds them, this day shall be a memorial to you. And you, you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Now, which day is this? We usually call it the, the day of Passover. But interestingly, let me just point out to us the idea, right? This is Nisan. And so on the 10th, they picked the goat. On the 14th, they kill the goat. On the 15th, they eat the goat or the lamb. So they kill. Here, they choose. They kill. Uh, let me use another color. Here, they cook. And here, they eat. You see this? One, two, three, and four. And that night, that night will be which night? The night of the Passover, the Pesach. This is the Passover. It is this night after they eat it that God is going to kill all the first born in the land that doesn't have the blood. And so, though we call this day the day of Passover, there is another seven days of unleavened. And this first day of the unleavened bread is the day when the action of skipping over or hopping over takes place. The skipping over doesn't take place on the day of Passover. The lamb or the goat is killed on the day of Passover, eaten the beginning of the next day, and that night, God's destruction over the land of Egypt takes place. And the action of skipping over or passing over so that destruction doesn't come to the house takes place right here. And so you shall keep it throughout your generations as a memorial. The word, the word memorial means what? It means a remembrance that you need to remember this event and this whole event is the entire episode not just the skipping over uh, but what they have done what God is doing and what happened to them and they shall keep it the word keep uh the word keep is to hold the memorial, hold the feast. Now, the word feast is a very interesting word. The word feast is when everybody comes together and they will jump around and they will they'll congregate and, 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 and eventually there will be a celebration. Now, tonight in Exodus chapter 12, it is not a celebration. It will be a celebration after this in the subsequent remembrance because it is a remembrance of a victory, of a salvation, of a deliverance out of Egypt. And so God says, after this, you must remember and you will keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Now, the word ordinance is statutes. And if you wonder what statute means, it is a custom. 
it is a something that they will, must do all the time. Now, in Chinese New Year, we have customs, uh, the social customs of having a uh, reunion dinner, right? The giving of ang pao, uh, the, the drinking of tea, you know, things of that nature. But in the Israelite culture, God is creating culture. God is telling them, this is your culture. You are my people and I'm taking you out of Egypt. I've asked you to do all these things. So this day, you must remember as a feast to the Lord, as a celebration to God throughout all your generations, meaning not just this generation, but the next generation and the next generation and the next. That's why they have to celebrate that and keep it as a feast, right? To protect it and make it into a culture, make it into a custom, make it into a rule that they pass down generation to generation for a long, long time. Olam. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day, you must remove all leaven from your house. What do you mean leaven? Anything that has yeast. Not that they can't eat yeast, but at this point in time, you must remove all of them. Not a single single, what you call it, uh, a single existence of leaven can be in the house. Why? It's a rule. God is giving them so many rules this night. The way they pick the lamb, the way they kill the lamb, the time they kill the lamb, how to cook the lamb, how to eat the lamb, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And what you do with the blood, uh, and when you eat it, how you are dressed, you know, all these, and one more thing is remove all leaven from the house. And so for whoever eats leavened bread from the first day to the seventh day, that person shall be executed from Israel. This is a very important word. It's so important to God that I have given you some rules. Just listen. Don't add, don't subtract, right? Don't say I have half Unleavened and half leavened. It doesn't work that day. It's matzah all the way. Matzah all the way for seven days. And so you eat it from the first day. It will be a holy convocation. What is a holy convocation? That would be a calling together. You come together on the first day. You're called to come out together. And on the seventh day, it will also be another coming out together. So the first and seventh day is a special day. No manner of work shall be done on them. It is that special. And it is a day where everyone must eat and only may be prepared by you. And so verse 17 says, you shall observe, you keep the feast of unleavened bread the Feast of Unleavened Bread uh, in verse 17, and that would be the matzah, right? The matzah. Unleavened Bread, it's matzah, right? The Feast of Unleavened Bread is called matzot, right? Matzot, sorry. In that day, and it is on this day that I, God, have brought out uh, your armies out of the land of Egypt. Now, this word army is host. It is Zavaot. You remember Yehovah Zavaot, the Lord of hosts. Well, this is the word. Although it is used to refer to the army of angels that God has command over so that the angels will do exactly what God has told them to do, to protect, to attack, to destroy, to defend. Well, now we read this word applied to the Israelites, that the Israelites themselves are also called Zavaot, that they are Zavaot of God, because they are going out of Egypt to serve God. So the nation of Israel is an army or a host 
to serve. And you would read this and it would become meaningful in the book of Malachi or the Malachi. Therefore, you shall observe this day throughout your generation as an everlasting ordinance. Remember what ordinance is? A statute, right? A statute. In the first month of the 14th day at evening, uh, you will eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month in the evening. Uh, in the first month of the 14th day, from the 14th to the 21st would be the period of seven days. So seven days, no leaven shall be found in your houses. So clean it out before you start. And if you eat it, the same person, the one who eats, you see, God doesn't kill the entire family. It's the person who eats. He will be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Cut off means to be executed. Right? He will have no part of Israel. Whether he's a stranger, and this one is a word that you must remember, a gar. Israel is a gar in the land of Egypt. And in the congregation of Israel, there are also gar, strangers, foreigners who are not Israelites, who are with them. And God says they can eat too, right? Native of the land. Native of the land, and in this case, the land of Egypt. So, they are not Israelites. But God says, well, he will, if they eat leaven, they will be killed. So, they are supposed to eat unleavened bread. That's what it means, right? Everyone in the house whether you are Israelite or non-Israelite, or you are an alien, you are an Egyptian, you are a friend, a guest, you eat unleavened bread. And you shall eat nothing leavened in all, wherever you stay, you shall eat unleavened bread. Then that's the rule. God says, just listen to me. I'm giving you a rule. And the rule is to set you apart. Then Moses called for the elders of Israel and said to them, and so God has spoken to Moses, and now Moses is talking to the Israelites. And notice it's a repetition of what was above. And so take the lambs, remember, or goats. So don't get fixated over the lamb. It can be goats too. Uh, kill the Passover. So the goat or the lamb is called the Pesach. Take a bunch of hyssop. Now, hyssop is a green herb that grows by the roadside. It is very easy to grow. Uh, most of the time, they will take the leaves and they will grind it down to become spice. Uh, and so when, you, when it's all in a bunch with their stalks, that's the bunch of hyssop, you dip the dam in the basin after you kill the lamb, which means what? It means that after you slaughter the net and you drip and drain the blood. And then you put it onto the overhanging part of the door and the two matzah with the blood. And after this, none of you shall go out of the door until morning. For the Lord will pass through Avar. And then we'll strike the Egyptians because the Egyptians will not know this rule. And when he sees them, when God sees the blood on the lintel and on the two matzahs, God will pass over. Now, remember this word in verse 23? The word pass over is to skip over the door. The door of the house means skip over the house, right? And will not allow the destroyer, the one who bring destruction. I believe this would be the angel that is entrusted with this task of destroying the firstborn in the house. And so this destroyer will not come into your houses to strike you. 
and you shall observe this thing as an ordinance forever. It will come to pass when you come into the land which the Lord will give you, that will be in the promised land, just as he promised, that you shall keep this service. And it shall be when your children say to you, Hey, why are we doing this service? And that you shall say that it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who skipped over the houses of the children of Israel when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our household. Okay. And, and then the people bowed down their heads and they bowed down their heads. And the word worship here is shakach. All right. Uh, and that would be down on the ground or bowing their head, uh, 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 depressed, prostrate themselves. And that's what it means. These are the two same words. Why did they do that? Because the people heard what God is saying to Moses. And it is a very serious instruction because it is a case of death. So are you going to listen to God or are you going to be scared of the Egyptians when you kill the goat that is their God? That is the question. And so this evening of Exodus chapter 12, where you kill on the 14th called the Passover, the day of Passover, and then the next day, which be the 15th, where you eat, and that's when the destroyer will come. That's that whole period. It's called the Lord's Passover. And, and that is so crucial for us to remember that it's serious. And that's why the people just bow down. They, they, they can't he believe what they hear, that God is actually executing an, in, uh, a judgment and, and this is how they can be saved. If they want to be saved, they just follow the rules and trust God. If they don't want to be saved and they're afraid of the Egyptians, then don't do it. And that, in the conclusion of this verse, of verse 27, the conclusion was the people of Israel bowed down. They are fearful of God to see that God will stretch out his hand to kill all the firstborn of the land. And that's the power of God that they have seen all nine times and now the tenth. And that we will conclude for today and we will continue verse 28 uh, next week. Any questions? Pastor, what is the significance of the leaven uh, that it is so uh, so straight that they have to uh, have no leaven at all in the house during that period of time? Leaven in uh, is a symbolic uh, element, right? It is not a poison or anything like that. And God wants it to be symbolized that there is nothing that will interfere with the natural. Uh, elements of the grain. Uh, leaven is actually yeast. And when yeast is added to leaven, uh, uh, is added to uh, the flour, the flour will change its content. And so that's why we get bread, right, that rises. Uh, matzah will be very much like uh, a biscuit or uh, uh, a roti chanai, right? Uh, or a chapati. And they're all flat. It doesn't rise because the content of the flour doesn't change. It's pure. And so it is symbolic of, well, I suppose, purity. Purity. No influence. Uh, no external influence that causes it to become something else. So it's symbolic. It's not poisonous or anything like that. And remember, this is God's feast, God's rules. So they are not supposed to say, I, uh, I know why seven days, uh, maybe I'll eat five, uh, the other two I'll have uh, curry lamb or something like that. Like it, it, they can't do that. As you notice, 
uh, the instructions to them is actually very straightforward. There's no, no ambiguity because they want the children of Israel to, to hear, understand, and just do. Don't ask questions. And that's the kind of obedience that God wants them to be. Okay? Okay. All right. I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.